Okay, let's start. Uh, this is about the implementation of the non-axiomatic reasoning system. And uh, the paper I wrote it with Bernie Lofthaus and Bay Wang. And so let's start. Why is it worth looking into this project? According, according to my opinion, it has, a, has an answer to many problems in AGI. I'm not saying it has the perfect answer to it, but it has an answer to certain things. Like the non axiomatic reasoning system has conceptual representations, has attentional contour, has a solution for temporal inference, can deal with uncertainty and contradiction, has introspective reasoning, and can learn by this reasoning process. Also, it has a unified representation for episodic, procedural, and declarative knowledge. Um, the entire system is designed in the framework of an inference engine. And this such an inference engine consists of three parts. This is a logic, a memory in order to store the results, and a control mechanism which selects premises. In order to support the logic, there is a logic motor in the system, and this, uh, this logic mo motor will develop in order to be able to express the, the inference rules intelligently. So there's an inference rule language which allows us to express the, the, uh, the inference rules, and then everything which, what we needed to do was to represent the null logic rules in this language. Here we see one example, one example of a deduction rule, and uh, then additionally we needed to add a derivative. And this derivative is nothing else than whenever we give it two premises, it tries to match those null rules which match to the premises, which have, which have the structure of the premises, in order to be able to derive the conclusions. And for this, I won't go into the detail here, but basically it's able to, to exploit the structure of the inference rule Words so that it's able to combine inference words if they have a common structure of the premises so that it won't do matching twice, twice. so it will make sure that the substructure is only matched once for a given pair of premises or to be match multiple words. Um, next thing next thing is evidence tracking. Um, the thing here, we are not allowed to count evidence twice for a statement. And for this, we track the evidence of statements in the statement itself in the, as an additional meta information we give the statement. And so we track it, and whenever we have two premises, which uh, have an evident overlap, then we don't allow this derivation to happen. Next thing, we will come to some temporal inference details, and those are the projection, the eternalization, and the anticipation. And what this means, I will show now. At first, the projection. What is if both the premises we selected have a different occurrence then. For example, they correspond to two observations, and the observations were not happening at the same time. And so, so this is a quite natural scenario, so we have to deal with it. And the solution, the solution we took here was to project the occurrence stem of one premise to the occurrence stem of the other. And so and this projection basically means we decrease the confidence value. So, so it basically means for the other time there is less evidence for this. A second mechanism is the eternalization. 
it's generalizing an event which has a specific occurrence stamp so that it will be a statement with an unspecific occurrence stamp. And there is one, I put one uh, real world scenario here. If a, if a child sees black ravens, and at some point it will begin to believe that, that ravens are black, and not only in the times where it saw it, but also in general that ravens are black. So it creates this abstraction, this, uh, this uh, generaliz generalization, and this is basically a form of induction in the system. Another temporal mechanism is anticipation, and this is basically the system forming an expectation about the occurrence of a predicted event. Let's say the system has a certain certain uh, hypothesis, like the switch turns on the light, and it sees that someone turns the, the switch on, so it expects the light to go on and forms an anticipation. And what if the light goes not on? This is what, what's now happening. It's, it will see, okay, it did not happen as I expected, and everything which happens now is that a negative event is input, which says, okay, it did not, ex not happen as I expected it. And from this information, the system can correct its hypothesis and derive further knowledge from it. Also, also in classical con conditioning, there's this extinction case, and this is exactly what can be produced by just inputting this negative event plus reasoning. So, we are finished with the logical details and we can now go to the memory and contour. And first we will go to the memory. And the memory in us basically stores concepts and links them together in a, if they share a common sub, uh, if they share a, a common term. Like here we see that lion is a cat and here we see the concept of cat and another concept which says cat is an animal and because because a uh, lion is a special case of cat and cat is a special case of animal, they both share they share cat, so both concepts are connected to the concept cat. Also, also what we also see on the picture is the concepts contain a bag of tasks, and tasks can have different punctuation, but this I will show later. And this is basically how the memory is structured in, in the system. Now we come to the control part. What is the working cycle of the system? And this one is very simple. It's always this, this cycle we see here, which, which is used to, for all the cognitive functions in the system. And it is basically at first we select a concept from memory, but biased by the priority it has, so concepts which have a higher priority tend to be selected. And concepts with low priority has, have little chance for selection, but not zero. Also the tasks, uh, so at first we select a concept, then from this concept we just selected, we select a task, and this we do also priority based, based, so the tasks inside of a concept also compete, compete for attention and have all their own priority value. And then we select a link to another concept. And if we, if we did this, we can finally select the second premise from this other concept we link to. Now we have both premises, the one from the first concept, and the other, the other uh, they believe from the second concept, and now we can apply inference. And, this inf and by this inference process, we can generate new derived tasks. And this is not the end of the story, like we will see now. 
because das xenas can be beliefs, uh, because you may have wondered what I mean by belief, there tasks and can have three different punctuations. It can be a belief, which just is a piece of knowledge. It can be a question, which can be answered by a belief. And it can be a goal, which can be achieved through executing operations, as we already told us. And this is persecuted. So what, happen, what happens to our derived tasks when they, when they are resulting from our working cycle. They themselves can become new concepts. They can be, for example, derived compound terms which summarize, which summarize observed structures in our experience, or can be, can be abstract knowledge which is derived. And this knowledge itself, or this piece of knowledge can itself begin to form a concept. So we have this new derived task and the first thing, the system looks, does this concept already exist? If yes, uh, if no, it will at first exist, uh, it will at first create it in the memory, and mm -hmm, oh, it will at first create it, and, uh, and else it will, if it's created, it can put it into this concept. In this process, it always, or also revises, revises the beliefs, so that the evidence gets combined, and the same for goals, desire values, the evidence for certain desire values also get combined by this revision process. The big picture of the system is pretty simple. So we have our memory. This is the upper part with our with our concepts in it, and our working cycle which selects concepts and and selects two prem premises applies inference, and then the results will create new concepts and enter memory. So this is basically the entire picture of everything which is going on in the system. In conclusion, we can say that we have a unified principle which is able to, to, uh, to, have, to have perception, learning, reasoning, planning, decision-making realized. And I think this is one of the reasons art of the system might not be directly useful to you, but it might be worth to look into certain aspects of the system, because art of, I think, we don't have the, the final story. We have some stories which might be worth seeing. Um, OpenNAST itself is an open source project, and this is the web page, the web page where it can be downloaded and where further links are presented, like for the online book, for the wiki, for the IRC, for the Google group, discussion forum, where it can be downloaded, and so on. So this is basically the website, and when clicking on binary, it will download it. So, and if this binary package is uh, is extracted, there's a start script in it, and if Java 8 is installed, the visualization will come up, and you already saw this in our demo and tutorial session, and to also, to also finish this, I can say, uh, we can definitely show a lot of those principles, like, like perception, like, like planning, like decision making, and one of those examples was also shown in the tutorial and demo session where it needed to melt a toothbrush and reshape it in order to unscrew a screw. And so thanks for your attention. <laughs>